Have you ever been walking down the shaving aisle of your local Target and suddenly been hit by the crushing anxiety of every choice available? Two blades, five blades, sensitive skin for her, for him. I don't even want to know what this one is for. But what if one video could change everything? A video that didn't just show you how to shave, but the scientifically proven right way to shave. And what if I told you that this was that video? Hello internet, welcome to Style Theory, the only channel where when you sign on to host, you are contractually obligated to donate your body to science. And over the years here at Theorist, I have certainly done that. From consuming questionable gummy bears to showering with my coworkers, <sighs> multiple times. But I can honestly say that today is one for the books. And that's because we are finally answering a question that you all have been asking for months. What is the best way to shave your legs? Now, before you go clicking away because you're like, I don't shave my legs, this video holds no relevance for me. I have a question for you. Are you sure? While most people associate shaving your legs with aesthetics, that's not the only reason people pick up a razor, nor is it really the most common. You know what is? Sports, swimming, cycling, even some football and soccer players shave their legs for various reasons. And none of them want to deal with razor burn or ingrown hairs any more than people like me who shave their legs because they enjoy the feeling of fresh sheets against a smooth leg. And the best way to solve any problem? Conspire to make six of your close personal friends shave on camera for the entire internet to see. So that's what I did. I packed my car full of top secret shaving cargo and drove all over the greater Los Angeles area, which may not seem like a big deal, but in LA traffic, that's like eight hours spent dropping off all of my little gifts on people's doorsteps. In each of those packages, I left a set of instructions, a carefully curated selection of razors, some leg lubricants, and a mission to find out the most optimized way to shave your legs, thereby changing the course of body hair removal forever. Making up our team of shaving volunteers are a bunch of my LA friends. Repping the men, we had Style Theory regular Dan, who shaved a few times before for swimming, and Vance, a professional drag artist who shaves often for his shows. And then we have my ladies, who all have years of leg shaving under their metaphorical belts. There's my bookstore besties of 10 plus years, Jessica and Brianna, the amazing Asia, whose husband Melvin was actually one of the shavers in our beard episode. And finally, our own editor, Jerrica, who you may recognize better as her animated cat girl persona. But of course, I wasn't going to make them all do it alone. Yes, theorist, I am throwing my legs into the game too, because if there is one thing you should know about me, it's that I'll never dish out something that I'm not willing to do myself. My legs are no stranger to the theory scientific method. Speaking of, let me break down what we'll be testing today. In order to get the best, most optimized shaving experience, we need to take into account every step of the process. Three steps to be exact. Step one, exfoliant. Do you even need it? For this, we'll be keeping it simple. Our right leg will be our control and our left leg will be our exfoliated leg. Before each shave, we will scrub it down with this lovely candy cane scented scrub. Mmm, so refreshing. For step two, we're going to use all that leg real estate to our advantage. While a face can really only be divided into two halves, legs, we can fit a solid three there, baby. Front left, front right, and back. Which means we can finally test the three most popular kinds of, um, uh, well, for lack of a better word, um, leg lubricants. You know, that stuff that helps your razor slip and slide smoothly over your skin. Y yeah, there's not a great way to say it. So how about we make it better by making it a game? Every time someone says the word lubricant, you have to leave a soap emoji in the comments or put it in the live chat if you're here early enough for the premiere. Let YouTube know that we only post good, clean content here on Style Theory. But back to the experiment. For each section of our leg, we are going to assign it a lubricant. On our right, we'll be using shaving cream, the most popular option. Over 149 million Americans use shaving cream in 2020, and they think that by the end of 2024, that could reach upwards of 153 million. With that many people using it, there has to be something there, right? Well, these companies certainly say that there is. Skin to shave gel. Goes on silky, foams up soft. Pure Silk Shave Cream moisturizes for legs like pure silk. Try Skintimate Shave Gel or new Skintimate Shave Cream. Soften, smooth, and protect against mix with Skintimate. See, I was right about the swimmers. Unlike our other options, shaving cream is meant to make a cushion between your skin and the blades. And that cushion is meant to protect your skin from getting more cuts. And on our left side, we will be testing one that's actually a little new to me, shaving oil. Like shaving cream, it claims to moisturize and soften hair to make shaving easier, but instead of going for volume, it's all about being thin, which is meant to keep the razor from getting clogged and potentially allow for a closer shave. 
shave. And finally, for our control on the backside, we have our basic boring bar soap. This will let us know if all those marketing bells and whistles from the commercials are really just that, marketing. Moving on from the lubricants, we have upped our razor game for this episode to a whopping five different options. And theorists, I have something to tell you. Now, one thing I kind of revealed in the toothbrush episode is that me, I'm a little basic and I'm not afraid to admit it. See where I use the normal, disposable, fairly affordable toothbrush? I also use the normal, disposable, very affordable razor. For this experiment, I got all of us my normal, everyday Gillette disposable razor. No muss, no fuss, and it's cheap. A bag of these babies will only set you back about $10, making it less than a dollar for each razor. Then we have a safety razor, this one from the brand Kitsch. I gotta say, this one, it, it kinda scares me. It's just really intimidating, you know? It's big, it's hefty, and it looks like a power tool. Next up, we have our two five blades options, a woman's version and a man's version. What exactly makes them different? Well, we're going to put that to the test. And finally, in honor of our dearly departed Matt Pat, we are going to test an electric razor. Yes, they do actually make them for legs. For the purpose of our experiment, we're going to use the circular head option because that one was his favorite. Each razor, lubricant, and exfoliant combination will be judged on how close of a shave we get, do we end up with ingrown hairs or razor burns after, and if we would consider making it our new everyday razor. And we'll be shaving our legs every two days, the average for people looking to keep their legs smooth and hairless. Which, let me actually take a moment here for an important reminder to everyone out there. Body hair is not something you should ever feel like you have to remove or hide. Keep it, style it, shave it. Your body is your body. Take me for example. Nowadays, I'm a person that shaves when I feel like it. And like I said over on GT Live, I don't know how long you've let your leg hair grow ever in your life. There is a thing called the winter coat. Okay. That <laughs> I can figure out what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, Everyone has a different relationship to their body hair. I actually really enjoy my body hair. Um, I like how it looks. I grow very thick and very dark body hair, so I'm not the biggest fan. I feel like I have a love-hate relationship with body hair. There are times where I just can't even be bothered to care <laughs> about my body hair, whether it be on my legs, my arms, my upper lip, <laughs> my armpits. Um, especially as being a mom, it's literally one of the last things I think about. It's a mixed feeling and I feel like a lot of female identifying people will generally agree that body hair is just like a... Like it's not good, it's not bad, it's like, ooh, weird. And for me, well, leg hair and I have a difficult history. Obviously, if you can't tell from the cutout, I am a very, very pale individual, and my leg hair is not. It's dark and in your face. Even after shaving, you can kind of see my hair under my skin just a little bit, which is something I'm fine with now, but for a long time, it made me feel very, very self-conscious, specifically because it was a big reason I got teased. I have this core memory of being in my sixth grade world history class, wearing my Y2K capri jeans, feeling super cute, and just minding my own business. While our teacher was giving his lecture, I felt this tap on my shoulder. I turned to see a group of the popular girls sitting behind me and giggling to themselves. Now, I wasn't popular in high school, so at the time, I didn't know why these cool kids really wanted to talk to me. Turns out, it wasn't for any good reason. The conversation went a little bit like this. You should shave your legs if you're going to wear that. It's gross. But I shaved this morning. Are you sure? I mean, look at you. Ew. It was rough. So for a while, and we are talking years here, I would only wear pants or long skirts. I was ashamed to show my gross legs to the world. It took me a long, long time to realize that it wasn't me that was gross and wrong. It was their behavior. I love my legs now. We're besties. We go everywhere together. Heck, we are even taking on YouTube together. And isn't that the best revenge for little Amy? Those same people who made fun of her now get to see her succeed and run a fashion and style channel. It's like a coming of age movie, except instead of being crowned homecoming queen or something like that, I am about to shave my legs in front of everyone on the internet. Life is just a little funny sometimes, but enough wasting time. Let's dive into the experiment. Almost immediately, I realized I was in just a little too deep. Oh boy, this is one of the most intense setups I've ever done. So we have 
A cam running it up right front. We have GoPro B cam running it up from the side for the wide shot. And then we have the close up cam on the phone. But I didn't have time to sit and contemplate my life choices. We needed to prepare our experimental zone. So this is a surgical marker. It is what people use to draw out the diagrams of where they're about to cut people open for surgery. But for our purposes today, it's actually gonna help us divide our leg in three. We all set about dividing our legs into three, making sure to keep each section as even as possible. And this is when I noticed that everyone had a different setup and method for getting shaving ready. Jessica and Vance opted for a toilet setup with Jessica standing and Vance taking his sweet time on the porcelain throne. Brianna and Jerrica took to a side saddle approach, sitting on the edge of their tubs. And then you had the rest of us diving feet first into the water. This is called a mixing technique where if your water starts really cold at first, if you just kind of slosh around for a little bit, eventually you just mix all the hot water in and you end up with nice temperature water. Truly some big brain moments happening here. Each of us took our time, shaving around all the nooks and crannies on our legs, the ankle, the knee, the knee pit. Theorists, going through this footage, I saw a lot of very, um, let's say unique angles of everyone, I feel so much closer to all of you. But one wrong move with the razor could spell disaster. So we needed to keep complete and total focus. You know who I'm most excited for? For my dad to see this. He's gonna laugh at me so hard. Oh my God, this is gonna take them an hour. I already cut myself. Great start there, Dan. However, he wasn't alone. Everyone was struggling with our first razor. I think I might have cut myself. Ow, hate it. Zero out of 10. Little did I know as I was happily shaving away in my tub that this video may end up costing me more than just a few cuts and copious amounts of leg hair going down my drain. It could end up costing me every single one of my friendships. Across the board, people were hating on my favorite razor. Many were already feeling the sting of razor burn and seeing irritation pop up on their skin in the form of red bumps. But hey, at least we made it through with only minimal damage, right guys? Oh, oh no. What happened? You cut up your legs how badly? What happened to the guy that said, I shave at least three or four times a week, possibly even more. Theorists, I can't in good conscience show you what happened in that bathroom. It's just a little too brand unsafe. Let's just say Vance's bathroom ended the day looking a little bit more like a scene from Dexter than Architecture Digest. I think it's time for a little shaving safety PSA so you don't end up like Vance and his um unfortunate leg situation. Welcome to Shaving 101, where we are going to cover leg shaving's three biggest no-nos. If you take nothing else from this video. I want you to memorize these three rules, ingrain them into your brain because if Vance had remembered them, it would have saved his legs. One, if your leg hair is longer than a fourth of an inch, trim it before you take a razor to it. This is why people generally use a beard trimmer if they haven't shaved in a while. Do the same for your legs. Two, never shave dry. Why? Because three, you need to soften your leg hair with warm water before you start shaving. And hey, bonus tip 3.5, make sure you wait until those initial goosebumps from the temperature change go away. They will come, so wait it out. However, there was a bright side, the exfoliant. We all agree that the exfoliated leg shaved better, even if the difference was small. And when it came to our lubricants, the shaving cream was the clear front runner. When it came to the lubricants, the shaving cream for me was by far the best with that blade specifically. Overall, our participants liked being able to clearly see where they had already shaved, the spots they missed, and the soft protection of the cloud-like foam, or most of them did. I feel like the oil, the shaving oil, was the best fit. There's no like extra buildup that's happening around the blade. Whereas like the shaving gel and the bar of soap, I'm not only collecting my hair as I'm shaving, but it's also collecting the gel residue, the soap residue. So while things may not have been looking good for my disposable friend, it was time to move on to day two, the one I had been dreading since the beginning. So this is our straight razor day. Oh, feels so weird sitting in your clothes in a tub. 
We are using the Kitsch straight razor. Friends, this thing was intimidating. It was full metal and the weight of it alone left me shaking in my shorts. And I wasn't the only one feeling the pressure. I don't like this at all. I actually have a weird fear of knives ever since I kind of conceptualized what a knife is and what a knife can do to the human body. Freaks me out. Oh, I'm so scared. Don't make me cut. Amy is trying to kill me. I thought we were cool, Amy. Jerrica, I promise we are cool. But as we set to work, a few of us came to a surprising realization. I get it now. There's a learning curve. While we all struggled a little bit to start, it was clear the blade was working and working well. Maybe a little too well. Putting my leg back in the water really stinks. Not a fan. It felt like I was taking off the top layer of my skin. In. But I kept going and once I got to the shaving cream, suddenly everything changed. Because the cream feels like there's a barrier between me and this blade that I'm putting up against my skin, I am less hesitant and I am willing to press harder. A few bathrooms away, Asia was having a life-changing moment. The shaving oil with this, I have never gotten such a close and smooth shave before. Really the best combo. Dan was also having a life-changing moment just for different reasons. My legs feel weird. They feel so weird without like any hair. It's very smooth, it's very fun, but I don't like it. It's okay, Dan. The smooth life isn't for everyone. At the end of day two, Dan, Asia, Jessica, and myself were all pro safety razor. I liked that there was weight to it. I feel like that helped me get a closer shave. While Brianna and Jerrica were left trauma traumatized by their battle wounds. Yet even they had to admit that the razor did its job. But I will say, the, you know, the, the leg does feel very smooth. So that's a super plus. And it really did. Look at those legs. So smooth, so shiny, so potentially worth losing every single one of my friends for making them go through this. But I'm hoping to make this gamble worth it and you can actually help by clicking that subscribe button. I know it's a scary time, so much change and so much uncertainty. So why not subscribe so you can see a familiar friendly face in your sub feed each week, bringing you new and exciting adventures, including our upcoming fashion show, Creators in Fashion, that will bring together tons of your favorite creators in one room to put on a one-of-a-kind, never-before-seen show for you. Seriously, it is going to blow your mind. I am so excited. And the best way to keep on top of what's happening is to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting updates that are coming up super, super soon. The next razor on our list is one you are likely very familiar with, or at least familiar with their marketing. I'm your Venus, I'm your fire, your Introducing Venus from Gillette. Yes, today we are unboxing an icon, a monument of shaving fame, the Gillette Venus Razor, specifically the Comfort Glide. There are actually dozens of versions of this razor out there, but we wanted to test one that showcased the best Venus had to offer. This one had everything, five blades, a comfort grip handle, and moisture bars made to keep your skin safe and smooth. This thing wasn't just a razor, it was an experience. It comes in this lovely pink pack Package, and it comes with multiple heads. I like the little packages that they come in. It means that the moisture bar is getting moisturized and staying moisturized. It's honestly like a very Disney princess experience, which I'm not mad at. I like being a princess every now and then. I prefer to be a queen, but I'll take princess. I think that's who actually wins. This whole shindig is our shaving queen. Young and sweet, only five blades. Dee -dee -dee. <laughs> I... I'm not the musical protege. My lack of singing skills aside, it was time to put the razor to the test. Immediately, I found that the Venus had a smooth glide, but I struggled with the, uh, uh, what were they called, Dan? Slighty gripper guiding flaps. I hated that term. I hated all of that. And now it's immortalized forever. While I did eventually find my groove with the flaps, the group results were a little mixed. Oh, that's so smooth. Feels so comfortable. Doesn't even feel like there's a razor. It's really nothing to write home about. It's not like horrible, like the disposable, or like really great, like the one blade. It's not difficult to use at all. Like a 14 year old and up can pick this up and just start shaving their legs. Felt like a better experience. As it says on the package, it glides. It just like smoothly just went up and removed all the hair. It was super easy. It felt like butter. And for Brianna, this razor had an extra benefit. I have sensitive skin. 
so I've always itched a lot after shaving my legs. I still have been having some itching, but it's not nearly as bad as it has been the last few times that I've done this. So overall, today is a pretty good win for me. As a card-carrying member of the Sensitive Skin Club, I second that. And it brought out another first for me in this episode, choosing the shaving oil over the shaving cream. The mix of this moisture head with the shaving oil really felt like a winning combination. It felt like they were working together to really give me that slip and slide experience down my leg. What everyone wants to do when they talk about their legs, they want it to just be a slip and slide. I wasn't the only shaving cream stand to switch sides this round either, which made me wonder, maybe the best lubricant isn't a simple answer or not a solo answer. What if the type of razor could influence our preference? I needed more data, but what I did know was that my skin was having a reaction to the constant shaving. I have like my normal shaving bumps up here towards the tops of my thighs where my skin is extra tender. Really, I'm just having the same shaving experience I normally do whenever I shave a lot in quick succession. I had hoped that the exfoliant was going to be a big help for this. And while it wasn't working for me, it did seem to be for a few other people. Both Brianna and Asia reported their exfoliated legs and having less irritation. And at halfway through our experiment, I was still feeling optimistic that we'd find our perfect shaving formula. With each round, I've been able to pinpoint the pain points, pun intended, of each combination. But we still haven't uncovered the full picture. Speaking of bigger picture, our fourth razor was going to answer a question that I carried with me for years. Are men's razors actually better than women's? You see, I didn't pick that five-bladed Venus razor just for giggles. I had a plan. We were going to test it against the big boy, the one that almost took the crown in the shaving beard episode, the Gillette Fusion 5, and test it against its female counterpart. It's the same brand, the same flexible head, and presumably the same five blades as our Venus razor. So it should give us the same kind of shave, right? We're about to find out once and for all. Right away, what stood out to me was the lack of moisture flaps. Where the Venus had all those bells and whistles, this one was back to basics. And I liked it. It glided across my skin and all around the difficult areas of my ankles and knees. If I had to call it something, it would be familiar. More like the razors I'd used over the past few years. Asia was feeling it too. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's exactly what I use. I use the Harry's Five Bladed Razor. This is exactly like it. But was it doing a better job than the Venus razor? No, not really. It was pretty similar to the previous razor, razor number three, in that it had the five blades. I liked the last razor, so I guess I like this too. The only difference is this one doesn't have like the double moisturizer bar. And right there was the big difference, the experience factor that we talked about earlier. The Venus wanted us to feel wrapped in a cocoon of moisturized safety, while the Fusion 5 was just there to get the job done. Even Dan, who still used the Fusion 5 for his beard after that first episode, couldn't deny the difference. It was the Gillette five blade that was really more meant for facial hair for men. I gotta say, after using that one, clearly the Venus, I, I'm moving that up to a five. Confetti, fireworks. Congratulations, Venus. Despite that, overall, we had a really good experience with the Fusion 5. Nice, good shave, very good, Routine. Looking at our post-shave results, it did its job, but not any better than the Venus. Putting those two side by side, they look about the same, so really that experience is what made the difference. And the bigger thing that this round continued to prove was that the exfoliant was the true MVP. Not to the shaving, but to the long-term comfort of people prone to razor bumps and ingrown hairs. Like I continue saying, the exfoliated side my strawberry legs are starting to go down I think you can really tell like in this area you can see a big difference in this leg at least to me so that's crazy clearly we were on to something big entering into our final day our spirits were high each razor we tried since that unfortunate first round brought something new and exciting to the table moisture strips precision heads and yes a shave so close it could make you cry and I had high hopes that our final razor would top them all. Why? Because it was an ode to the man, the myth, the map pack. The man who fought the good fight to clear the name of electric razors everywhere. Can his legacy live on in the form of our final razor? The electric razor for women. Looks a bit like a, a dune sandworm, if you uh, can really see that. Um, 
I'm starting to think that maybe we didn't find the best version of an electric razor for legs. Well, here's the thing. When it comes to electric razors for legs, the options are severely limited. As of right now, it's not that big of an industry. And when it comes to cost effectiveness, we went with one that we thought was versatile. But I think we might have made a bit of a oopsie. But hey, I've been surprised before on this channel, so let's give it a fair shot, everybody. How does it work? Please explain. You can't really tell. Should we do a circular motion or a straight up motion? I could read instructions in here, but. Who's got time for that? I was having the same problem. No matter how hard I pressed, the motion I used, nothing was working. I was starting to think we'd all made a horrible mistake trying to take on Matt's legacy, but I couldn't give up. I needed to make it work. So I did what theorists do best, try and try again. Since the lubricants were only getting in the way, I washed off my legs and tried just using water. Did I mention that I have a fear of mixing water and electricity? No. Um. No, that's cool. It's cool. And totally not relevant anyway. And since the water only still wasn't working, I had one last thing to try. One that I hoped would yield at least some kind of result. Dry shaving. I know, I know. We learned in Shaving 101 that dry shaving is a cardinal sin. But I was desperate to find some kind of result. Make something work. And lo and behold, it did. Sort of. While I couldn't say it was a success, successful attempt, it did start to remove some hair from my leg. And I was ready to take this as a win until I checked on everyone else. No, just it, it did not do the job at all. I'm still prickly. I know that I said that the worst razor was the disposable. It at least did its job. I felt like today took a lot longer than many other days, which I do not appreciate. This didn't work out for me today, I don't feel like. See, but it's not getting anything. I feel prickly. Still. Even Jessica, who so far had always found a silver lining for each and every razor, couldn't find one here. I'm gonna be quite honest, I don't know if I've said this yet about a razor, but I didn't really enjoy using this specific razor. Looking at our final results, I couldn't deny the writing on the bathroom wall. This was a true failure. Worse than the disposable razor that took out Vance on day one. You know, we really should send him like a gift basket of band-aids and neosporin after this. Um, someone, someone make a note. So after all the blood, bath water, and tears, where do we stand? What is the best way to shave your legs? Well, I want to go back to that three-step breakdown we started with at the top of the episode and go through them one by one, starting with the razor itself. While we may have had some better luck with a different brand, the Sand Mouth Electric Razor was an instant and complete failure. I'm sorry, Matt, but your legacy of electric razor supremacy here on Style Theory has ended today. And that's not the only long-term relationship coming to a close. I have to say, after this episode, I am a changed woman. At the start, I was all in on the disposable razor. I can't in good conscience stand here and say that that is my favorite or that I recommend it to anyone at all. In fact, I need to take a second here to say something to that disposable razor. Come here. Come close. Hey, disposable razor. We've known each other for a long time and, well, <sighs> this is hard, but I think we should see other razors. It's not me. It's you. No, really, it's you. You hurt my friends. You hurt the environment. And honestly, some of these razors just give me that spark that I've been missing. I hope we can still be friends. Nope, nope, uh, they're gone. Okay, so much for an amicable breakup. So, which razor was the best of the best? After reviewing all the hours of footage, crunching all the data, I can definitively say that the Kitsch Safety Razor universally gave us the closest and smoothest this shave across the board, but it did have its drawbacks. Most of us had never used a safety razor in our lives, and we ended up with a few battle wounds because of it. However, with a little time and practice, we'd likely be able to cut down on those cuts over time while maintaining smooth results. And the bigger bonus? More than any razor, it took longer for the hair to grow back after shaving with the safety razor than any of our other razors, meaning we'd actually be able to go longer between each shave while still maintaining fairly smooth legs. So congratulations, Kitchen the Safety Razor. Maybe next time we'll be sponsored. In second place, we have the Gillette Venus Comfort Glide. In terms of appeal, it did well holding its own with little to no lubricant. I feel like you could probably just like dip this in water and shave comfortably. It was a really good option for novice shavers like Dan. I'm a little bit more knowledgeable, a little bit more educated. I did, in fact, gain enough experience and level up. And people with sensitive skin like me and Brianna. So if you are just starting out on your shaving journey, it's the best of the bunch 
for keeping user error to a minimum. And rounding out third place is our manly, masculine Gillette Fusion 5. It can do the job just fine, but it couldn't break into the top two of our experiment when put against two razors built to conquer the winding landscape of our legs. Then there were our lubricants, and here we actually have a tie between our top two options. No, 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 not you, Soap. Get out of here. Go on, go on, go on, get. No, it came down to our shaving gel and our shaving oil. They both had pros and cons, and in the end, it split our six shavers right down the middle. On team oil, you had Jessica, Brianna, and Asia, who liked that the oil left their skin feeling more moisturized long after they finished shaving. And the thin consistency meant it didn't clog up the razor. On the other end, you had Team Cream, a very unfortunate name, made up of myself, Dan, and Jerrica. Woo, Team Theorist! We liked how the shaving cream created a protective barrier between the blade and our skin, which led us to getting less cuts. And it also left us feeling soft and moisturized. Clearly, the big winner of this round, moisturizer. And that actually brings me to the final piece of our shaving puzzle, part three of our three-step formula, the exfoliant. Throughout the week, it was clear early on that the exfoliant wasn't doing too much to give us a closer shave, but I don't think that means we should cut it from the routine. Over the two and a half weeks of the experiment, we saw our participants' skin change before our eyes, and all of it thanks to the exfoliant. I think it helps with when the hair grows back, it doesn't feel like it's embedded or getting ingrowns into my leg. The exfoliated side, my strawberry legs are starting to go down. I think you can really tell. You can see a big difference in this leg. The only thing I felt was different was the after effect of it, which my left leg was so much more smooth than my right leg. It turns out that a smooth, painless shave isn't just about the tools you use, but the way you care for your skin. The exfoliant had helped clear away dead skin, bacteria, and other buildup, making a cleaner surface and leaving less of a chance for infection and inflammation. That, coupled with the fact that the moisturizer in our lubricants clearly reigns supreme, means that treating your skin well, that's the true secret to keeping the pain out of your shaving routine. Man, I wish we had taken this experiment out of the shower as well and added some lotion into the mix. I guess we'll just have to add it to the list for later. So there you have it. You now know the optimized way to shave as proven by all the scientific sacrifices you watched unfold today. And I just hosted my first style theory. Solo, no handlebars. And over the course of this episode, I realized something. Like I mentioned earlier in the episode, I always had a lot of insecurity around my legs growing up. And coming on here, showing all those so called imperfections to you, the theorist community, has made such a difference to me personally. I've been with style theory since the beginning, and one thing that's always been so amazing has been you, the people who tune in each episode, eager and willing to learn and go on these wild adventures. Because here's the thing, in doing that, you've created a space for me to feel safe to come on here and confront some of my biggest insecurities. From showing my teeth in the toothbrush episode, to coming on screen with no makeup or my hair being all wild and crazy after a shower, cause yeah, that happened. And that's not even talking about the ones we have planned coming up in the next few months. Through it all, I never had to worry that it would be ill received or that you would make fun of me for all these things that at one point or another in my life, I used to think made me, as those bullies in sixth grade said, gross. I truly believe that people are beautiful and amazing as they are, however you wanna present yourself. And you have shown me that there are people out there who feel that same way. It makes me so proud to be on this journey with you. So thank you, because this is going to be so much fun. But hey, that's just a theory, a style theory. Keep looking sharp. And if you're looking to dive back into the shower already, click on the box to the right to learn about how your soap is hiding a ton of dirty little secrets. Or if you're curious to learn a little bit more about me, your new host, click on the box to the left and that will take you to our recent GT Live full of Amy lore. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.